Welcome to the Supernatural with Laura Maxwell on Eternal Radio. In these programs, we will hear the true supernatural accounts from those who try various spiritualities. You shall tell the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Well, folks, it's it's almost Halloween, and if you've been listening for the last five or six weeks... Um, I interviewed Deborah Hawkins and she shared how Jesus took her out of uh, Satanism and the occult. And um, we have another guest on today who was also a Satanist and he's going to talk a little about Halloween too. And I appreciate it's quite a dark subject and six weeks worth listening to is kind of heavy so... Thank you guys for for your patience and hanging on in there, and we shall get back to our usual programs very soon. And our guest tonight is Jerry Blaze. He's been a Facebook friend of mine for, oh, about four or five years now, I think. Uh, Jerry has written his testimony and an article on my blog about two years ago. He has a website and the website is jmblaze.wordpress.org and it's titled It's All About God. That's the same title as his radio show, which is on the Reach, Reaching Out radio network ran by Montel Fields. Jerry has a new book about to be published soon, All About God. And his second book will be Delivered from Darkness that will share his testimony. So let's go right across now and welcome Jerry to the show. Hi, Jerry. How are you? Hey, thank you, Laura's sister, so much for having me. I'm glad to be here. Well, it's lovely to... We've spoken to each other a few times on on radio shows over the years, so it's, um, it's great to catch up again. Oh, very much. Um, this is a, a, a true blessing to me. True blessing to me too. And um, so, so today you're you're going to share with us really how you got into the left hand path, various forms of Satanism, Luciferianism, and then you're going to sum up a little bit about Halloween. So just jump in there, Jerry, and tell us about about your youth. Well, I you know. As a young kid, you know, I, I I began like and a lot of people that came to believe the way I did had the same interest. I, I had a devout attraction to like horror movies. I was very heavy into comic books and usually things that that had like, you know, were drenched in like horror or gore, violence and things that, you know, would you know, symbolize or, you know, have everything to do with either the devil, the occult, like witchcraft and things like that. I have always had a fascination for these things, you know, whether it be black magic, death, doom, you know, I've always, you know, you know, I was always like a very angry person. So I was always like very attracted to violence and war. And, um, as I began to grow up and, you know, get into my teens, my early twenties, I became very drawn to heavy metal music, you know, and, you know, I, I started out like I was into like bands like Black Sabbath and, you know, things like that. And once the 80s kicked in, I started getting into like Slayer, Metallica. I was very big into punk, you know, and I was um, heavy into things like, you know, Sex Pistols, The Misfits. And uh, there's actually a band called Samhain which is by the same singer for the Misfits, Glenn Danzig. And then I was in his band, Danzig. And it, I would say this is why you, you hear me speak out a lot against that kind of music, because that is a very deadly, destructive portal. And you were in a band? You, you were in one yeah, of I was, bands? Yeah, I was in a band called Evil God Revival. Mm-hmm. And um, in fact, anybody, if you look it up on Google, you'll find we had a CD out called From the Heart of Darkness. And, um, you know, it's, it's just drenched with satanic lyrics and anti-Christian, you know, blasphemy, 
you know, I was a devout hater of Christianity, you know, and, you know, and I was all about, you know, other anti-Christians. I was, you know, very big into Frederick Nietzsche. I was very big into, um, you know, Ragnar Redbeard. He wrote a book called Might is Right. I was very big into Machiavelli. And, you know, I just, I liked all these things. I was a very big fan of like, you know, um, John Milton. And I was all about the Paradise Lost, you know, book that he, book that he wrote. And I just kept getting more, you know, flirtatious with darkness and the occult. And when I started to listen to a lot of the music, that's, that's what really drew me in and opened me up to that whole world. That's why I always, you know, try to tell individuals, you, you have no idea how, how strong of an influence music is. It, it's something that is operated and utilized in the spirit realm. People may look at that and not take it seriously. You know, I know a lot of folks, um, you know, sometimes they'll look at you like you're, you're outright crazy, but there's nothing crazy about it and there's nothing illusionary about it. You know, what you listen to will motivate, influence, and eventually capture your soul, and it will put you in bondage. And that's what happened to me. And, yeah, you know, and I, I was very big into Norwegian black metal. That's, and as I started to get deeper into this, to this stuff, I, I began to emulate a lot of the people I listened to, you know. Um, and I just, I, I shared their hatred. I, I shared their their, you know, fascination with Satan, you know, um, especially when you get into like that from Norway and Sweden and a lot of these black metal bands that were big in like the 90s. And, and I, I was into the hardcore of the core. I like bands like Mayhem, Dark Throne. I was very into a band called Abruptum and, you know, Behemoth and Bathory. I mean, these bands are, are very bad for the spirit. Cradle of Filth. I mean, I was into all of this stuff. I think, and, Jerry, you know, Jerry, when, you're, when you say that, that music has that spiritual element to it, I totally agree. And it reminds me of, after all, you know, when, when Satan, when he was still in heaven and known as Lucifer then, he was the, the, the leading angel of worship. So he totally knows worship music, you know, worship. He knows about music. He knows the, the spiritual He's twisted it since he fell, obviously. So, yeah, it is. It, it does have a spiritual side to it. And he'll use it, I mean, against you. <laughs> you know, and um, that's why, you know, I, I try to tell a lot of other youth and, like, you know, younger people that are into this kind of music. I mean, you know, in my era, I was very into metal and thrash and stuff like that. Today, it's more like hip-hop and gangster rap and, you know, a lot of what they call hardcore um, you know, um, and you know, <laughs> it's just a lot of people say, well, I like the music. I don't, I tend not to pay much attention to what they, what they say, but that's impossible. I mean, the music and the words are going to flow and they're connected as one. Okay. And it's going to get into your spirit and it's going to do something. That's, that's exactly why I, I'm a lot of people can call me a fanatic or I'm, I'm eccentric or I'm overreactive, but that's why I, I can't support churches where they do praise and worship and they'll take the musical, you know, structure from a certain song. Say, let's just say hypothetically, they take a Metallica song, remove the lyrics, keep the, but keep the music and put Christian lyrics. And they're like, now it's, it's worship and God. And it's, I mean, that, that may be your intention, you know, and I, I can commend that, but I can't commend what you're opening the door to. I mean, because you're still emulating and you're still giving homage to something that was originally written by Metallic or we could say, or by Danzig. Yeah. Danzig is a big hater of Christ. I mean, anybody that knows about him, he's one of the biggest anti-Christians in the music scene. Why would any Christian want to take, say, a song from him, all right, and, yeah. and put Christian lyrics to it? Like, you know, anybody, I'm sure some of your audience is familiar with the music. Let's say take a song called Left Hand Black from his third album and, you know, call it, you know, Right Hand White or something, you know. Yeah. It doesn't make a difference because you're still <laughs> emulating and, and, you know, patterning it after something that was originally written to yeah. come against God. Exactly. Because that's so if the whole song is, is an anti-God song. 
He's talking about bringing God in the palm of his left hand. I mean, lyrics like that. I mean, I mean, the spirit is going to be there. Why would you want to bring that into your church? Mm-hmm. And so, and did, did you go there? Is that where you met other Satanists? Was it primarily through going to concerts that you met Satanists? Yeah, how did, how did you get into primarily, that? yeah. I mean, I met a lot of Satanists. And, you know, I when I first became a Satanist, I was into LeVay Satanism. I eventually became a theistic Satanism, meaning, meaning I, I actually believe in Satan like a theist, like he was a deity to me. Uh-huh. I worshipped him as an actual God, my God. Uh-huh. But I, I began into LeVay Satanism because, you know, for a while I, I was one of those people I wasn't sure if there even was a God, you know. I was just so boiling over with hatred in my heart. I had so much hate in me. And Satanism was a good outlet for me to release that hatred, to make it poetic, to make it an art form, okay, to do my bidding and to to walk my life and to accomplish things on my terms, okay, under my rule, under my power. And I felt that the devil gave that to me. And, you know, and when I read the Satanic Bible, that's actually the very first book I ever read cover to cover, you know. And I was, you know, just lived my whole life off of what he identifies with as the nine satanic statements. And, you know, and I actually went through a a ritual that was a satanic baptism, you know, and that's something I I personally don't like to, I don't talk about it, but so much because I don't want to give it glory. I don't want to, you know, you know, I don't want to like, you know, fan that fire, but that's a part of my life that was very, very bad, you know. And I was I was a hardcore blasphemer and hater of God. I mean, I spat on Bibles. I burned them. Um, even when I used to perform in my band, I mean, I I would you know I used to trample the cross on stage and praise the devil. I was encouraging people to chant. I mean, I you know I was literally I I was taken over by some sort of a spiritual force. Yeah. I was like a minister for the devil. That's what a lot of these people are that are in these bands, these singers and these these performers. They're literally devil's advocates. They're like his messengers. They're just doing it in music form, you know. Um, other people, you know, may do it differently. They may teach it. They may, you know, be like preachers or speakers or teachers or professors or priests, whatever they are. Everybody has their different way of, you know, delivering a message, whether, you know, all all religions and you know, even with Christianity, look at all the denominations you have, you know. Well, it's the same thing then when you look at the occult. It's different. Everybody has their own way of delivering a message. And that was, I had an agenda, you know. And just the hate that I had for God. And, you know, and I, I was heavy into the occult aspect too. You know, I mean, I did, you know, have a big interest in other areas of the occult. I was very big into Aleister Crowley. I was very big into Helena, Madame Blavatsky, yeah. you know, I was never a new age spiritualist, but I was attracted to, to a lot of the teachings, uh-huh. you know, cause I, I was always like an intellectual type. So, and I was very philosophical a lot with my approach. So that's what drew me, you know, um, but I would accomplish my, my goals in life. And I stood on the sword of, of the devil of Satanism. You know, and I always felt that was the fire that ignited me, you know, and just a lot of the books that I studied. And when I started getting into practice, I did it for self power and self gain. That's why I, you know, started to like get into, you know, different things. Like I was heavy into the Golden Dawn type of practice. I was very into a book called The Lesser Keys of Solomon, which is also known as the Goshen. And I was, you know, wanting to learn how to, you know, summon the you know, the demon world and anybody that's familiar with that book, you know, know it's the book of sorcery. You know, it, it, it gives you a list of 72 different spirits and you know how to, you know, invoke them. It's a, it's a bad practice, yeah. you know? And, um, you know, and I, I just, I, I just was so into that type of world. You know, it was the only thing that was real to me. It's the only thing that, that made sense to me at the time. And it fueled me. It gave me a purpose. And, and the purpose that I wanted was to conquer and to overpower everyone and anything in my way. And that's what Satanism was to me. Yeah. 
And, you know, then as I began to, you know, go deeper into spirituality, I, I, I started to acknowledge the devil as an actual deity. And that's why I, I started to drift away from Levaism and I began to actually become a traditional Satanist. And what did you, know? you think? What did you think of Jesus Christ then? What was your belief about him then? It was it was very horrible. Uh-huh. I I've mocked him. I I've hated Christ so much. Where I I used to act, I used to actually because I was I was always like an artist, uh-huh. and I used to draw artists like cartoon work that of things of Jesus that I that's really nothing I could even say what I drew, uh-huh. but they were very blasphemous, very perverted. Um, I mocked his miracles. I mocked him. I used to, you know, I would like when Christians used to like, um, want to witness to me on the street. Mm-hmm. I would, I would literally threaten them with violence Yeah. and I just, I didn't want to see it, hear yeah. it. I was, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So did, did you, did you and your Satanist colleagues, did you believe that, um, Satan was the real God and that Jesus was kind of like. Uh, you know, an imposter or something like that, or did you recognize he was the savior, but you just didn't want to know him? Well, I believed I recognized him as a true God, but I also recognized him at the time, and I believe he was very misunderstood. And I was more or less like a Satan sympathizer, and I seen all religion as the adversary, as you know, the hater, you know, of mankind. All along, it's really the devil, because the devil's primary agenda is to destroy the human race. Mm-hmm. People don't want to understand that, but <clears throat> I'll, I'll just give you some, and, and I know a lot of your listeners are some, you know, I, I admire so many of the people that you work with, so I know that we're on the same page, you know what I mean. Things that you see on television, just your evening news, can be an instrument of the devil. Mm-hmm. Things that are taught in the public school systems isn't, can be an instrument of the devil. As with the music and the entertainment that you observe, even science and philosophy, everything that people are taught is in one way, shape, or form not correct. People are led astray. I'm not trying to tell people not to get educated, not to attend school, not to be – I'm not suggesting that. But what I am suggesting is be, be spiritually tuned in and understand and know how to discern, know how to or, – or you want to put it – Maybe some people like to use the word perceive, you know, but um, the devil is, is he can have his, his handprint on everything and use it to destroy you, whether it's music, whether it's, you know, even if you can go to like to an art gallery, you know, or read a book on some type of a philosopher, you know, and it could be used against you, you know, the devil, he uses science against man. That's why you have atheism. <laughs> you know, and um, yeah, and yeah. There's many, there's many top scientists who actually became Christians with their oh, extensive absolutely. studies into science. They became Christians because of it. Um, but I totally I agree with you about you know our, the culture and everything because um, as you mentioned, Madame Helena Blavatsky, she uh, was a medium, mother of the New Age, and. Mm-hmm. Um, but she was a Luciferian. She believed Lucifer was God, and she did teach that all religions, all spiritualities, all spiritual powers and beings all came from Lucifer and that he was God, and their agenda was to really push that in the culture any way they could, and obviously that's still theosophy. She founded theosophy, and that still continues today and is at the, the heart of the New Age well, I know up and when I was still living in Philadelphia, I actually tended some of their, their, their classes, the United Lodge of Theosophists uh-huh. up there. And I used to get their literature in the mail. And I, you know, I actually befriended a woman that was one of the women that were conducting classes. And, you know, you, gotta, you have to be careful because when you're dealing with, with the occult realm, okay, and I'm, you know, I know, you know, and you have to realize what the Bible says, like, that's why I love Verses like Colossians 2.8 says, Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy or vain deceit according to the basic principles of the world, you know, or the tradition of man, but not according to Christ. That's exactly what that is. And the reason it's called deception 
is because when, when you encounter an occultist, and you know this, Laura, like whether it's even a New Ager or even somebody into to witchcraft like Wiccan or a Satanist even, you know, or notice how, how deeply intellectual these people tend to be. They're usually highly educated, very well read, and nine times out of ten know the Bible more than your average Christian. Uh-huh. Yeah, and yeah. that's why when you spectate a lot of the debates, it really shatters me that more often than there should be, you see the Christian Christian come out on bottom because Christians, I don't know what they refuse, not all, but more and more are not reading their Bible. Mm-hmm. They're not studying. They're not seeking knowledge. God says in his word, my people are destroyed yeah. for lack of knowledge. Yeah. Lack of knowledge of what? Lack of knowledge of God. Mm-hmm. You know, if you you lack knowledge, then somebody with knowledge is going to destroy you and devour you. You know, and these people are very well read. I mean, I would say a lot of them, they're, if you speak, they almost sound like they're genius level. Yeah, you know, yeah. very smart people, but it doesn't mean they're right. No. You know? so, there's so many of them. I've spoken to them too and gosh, half the time I can't understand them, <laughs> but they have come to Christ, um, so it's not as if, because originally some people might think, well, if they're so, so clever and so, so intellectual, therefore maybe Lucifer is God, if that's what they've come to think, but no, because these people can come to Christ, I, I, I've spoken to them, so, you know, it's not about the intellect, it's... Um, yeah. It's definitely spiritual. Well, you look at somebody like who is more of an intellect than Einstein. Here's a here's a here's the the person who you know he you know he he gave us what relativity is. You know he and yet he could never understand why there was evil in the world. He couldn't under, he it, it blew his mind. And that was where he like. That's where his struggle was, because believe it or not, Einstein did believe in a higher power. He was not a Christian, but he did believe in what we could say is a God or, you know, a super intellect or something greater than ourselves that orchestrated and was, you know, instrumental behind the universe. He understood that. But the reason why he wasn't able to embrace a lot of religion, Christianity, we could say to begin is because look at look at the terror and the destruction that religion has done over the years. Yeah. See, religion, Laura, in, in a lot of ways, draws people away from God more than atheism. It's like religion mm-hmm. is often what spawns atheists. It's, oh. it's, it's, it's what gives birth to them. Absolutely. Because, you know, and religion is not how you find God. No. Religion is, is focusing on man, mm-hmm. not God. If people would just learn how to push religion aside and see God without without the religious scope, people like Richard Dawkins should learn how to do that, or Stephen Hawking, or Carl Sagan, or all of these, you know, or Christopher Hitchens, or even Frederick Nietzsche from the last, you know, the two centuries ago. They want to see God through the scope of religion. And that's exactly why you're never going to find them. That's yeah. exactly why Christ opposed the Pharisees because totally. of religion. Religion is, is 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 one of the most instrumental weapons of the enemy. Yeah, I, I it agree. Is. And you know, when I was in, into the the New Age and spiritualism, I uh, hated you know the fact that there was d- religions and uh, all the wars and hatred that it caused, and um, I, I had no time for Christianity either because of all of that. And really. Uh, I had a bad picture of Christianity because of what was portrayed. I didn't know that Jesus was nothing like what most no. <laughs> uh, Christians portray him to be, and that you know they're all out, a lot of them are are, are corrupt, and the teachers are right. corrupt. And so, yeah, I didn't know that Jesus was as wonderful as he actually is. Um, so, you know, so I totally, I, I totally do agree with that. And I think mm. that sometimes when you talk with people and you discuss these things with them, um, in their in their journey and their search for truth, they they can get to the point where, in actual fact, they have examined so many spiritual paths 
they've dabbled in so many things, they've studied so many things because they're so almost genius level that they've got to the point where in actual fact they begin to see interestingly that so many people around the world have come to Jesus and been set free from spiritual problems that the name of Jesus Christ is the name that sets them free so they're almost there but not quite because the thought of religion the thought of Christianity and all the corrupt things puts them off and it's like they're almost stepped into the light of Jesus and yet they hold back and it's because of all the absolute nonsense that religion has caused that holds them back from that final step and I find that, that right. really quite really quite sad and, and the thing is if, if, if people would just just for a just for a breath second mm -hmm. give the Bible and, and don't read the Bible you know just you know at face value look at it in, in, in the spiritual okay the Bible itself is, a, is an anti-religious book Really, if you look at it, it's it's a spiritual book. It's a book that is meant to touch the heart. That that's what that's what when the Bible talks about circumcision, that's that's of course like the tradition of it is a physical you know thing becoming. But then there's circumcision of the heart. That's that's what that's talking about. That's why it says you know put let God's commandments be written on your heart. If you only look at them as something written on tablets, that's religion. And, you know, when you look at, look at this though through the eyes of Christ, Christ is in opposition to the very same forces that, that the atheist is. But the atheist just doesn't want to recognize Christ for who he truly is because they're looking at him through the scope of organized religion like I did. I hated God with a passion because I didn't like what I seen through religion, be it Christian religion, you know, be it through, you know, not just the Christian religion, but every single other religion on the face of the earth. OK, you know, over in the Middle East, you know, how can you call war holy? They I, they 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 have such a twisted view of God. How is war holy? There's nothing holy about it. I mean, I understand in, in the Old Testament, you know, you've seen a lot of wars breaking out, which was usually God's people that were under attack, you know, be it from like the Philistines or, you know, or like, you know, or being, you know, owned by like, you know, the Egyptians and the Pharaoh. And, you know, you see kings like Jehoshaphat and Nebuchadnezzar and, you know, you see a lot of the, But it's like. It's not what God wants. God didn't advocate it. God didn't want that. He he doesn't want war. He doesn't like to see blood and killing. No. Okay, that's that's a, that's a mechanism of the devil. And you know, and notice what look what comes from religion. I mean, religion goes hand in hand. Like I say, what 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 a lot of this you know, fault faulty science. Religion goes hand in hand with politics. It goes hand in hand with government. It. You know, it brings out a lot, you know, what I what I identify with is almost like a social Armageddon that you see going on. You know, um, a big thing that's used in that, as we see lately, is the devil likes to use things like such as racism mm -hmm. and bigotry yeah. and, you know, cultural divide and, you know, just, you know, this whole sociological decline that we see. It's so distorted and it's going almost in reverse. That's the devil because he seeks to destroy the human was made in the image of God himself. God they made us in his image. Of course, the adversary of God is going to want to destroy us. He can't destroy God because he's already been defeated by God for Christ. But he's going to try to destroy us to help us share in his faith. That is his well. agenda. That is what he does. Totally, and I think as well a big thing um, to do with it is really the fact that the Bible doesn't really get um, taught that well today, so so people um, don't have a, a good picture of it and, and everything about no. it because basically um, folks aren't they're realizing the God of the Old Testament, the God of the New Testament seems to 
um, opposite. They, they they almost think, and the, and it's because they've not been taught the Old Testament. God um, deliberately showed the people that using religion and and um, you, you know going through all the the routines and all the the things that they had to do was never going to connect them to God totally that, that the only way would be the sacrifice of Jesus Christ himself when it was his time to to be born on the earth so there's that there's all of that symbolism that people haven't really grasped and also I think because if you pick up the Bible and you don't yet have the Holy Spirit often it just doesn't make sense I was certainly no. like, I was certainly like that when I was a spiritualist, the Bible made no sense to me. I found no attraction in it at all. But once I was, I was born again, the Holy Spirit came into my life. It was like the Holy Spirit opened the Bible to me and I could see it in a fresh way. Passages from the Bible would jump out at me um, because the Holy Spirit was showing me things. Um, revelation was given. But, but when you don't know Jesus yet, it just seems like a book. It doesn't have that supernatural effect on you um so yeah but please tell us how did, did you eventually meet a christian or, or how did you begin your life begin to change well my life began to change and, and this is i you've heard me talk about this a lot i back I, I became christian it was actually the last during the last week of december in the year 2006 um it was actually i believe it was december the 30th and of all places, I went to a gym because at the time, I was um, I was training I was training in mixed martial arts, and I was still powerlifting. And I went to this gym when I was still living in Philadelphia, and you know I went up there you know a few times every week to work out. And and the one day I went up there on that on that thirtieth of that month, there was a gentleman walking around up there, real nice, friendly person, saying hello to me. And he kept watching and, you know, and I, I was kind of observing him, but I just wanted to work out and not be bothered, you know, uh-huh. and we just, you know, started to drift away and I just worked out and got my, my routine finished and went down to the locker room, got a shower, started getting dressed and then he walks in the locker room. Okay. And we start talking again. He was asking me, you know, are you like a kickboxer? And, you know, did you used to like be some kind of weightlifter or something. I'm like, well, yeah, I, you know, I was explaining to him what I do. And, and he was speaking to me for about five to 10 minutes. And just out of left field, he, he popped a question to me if I knew Jesus Christ. And, um, I looked at him and I, at that second, I just, I felt like a, a lump in my stomach and I just, I, a feeling overcame me. And I just, I, part of me really wanted to tell him to get away from me. Um, I don't have the mood for this right now, you know, and, but, but something though didn't was holding me back to say anything. And it's like, I was just compelled to stay there to hear him speak to me. Uh-huh. And he was explaining to me the whole message of Christ, the message of salvation, who he was. And he was telling, and I don't know why Laura, and, and I've had that same, you know, similar thing said to me, but at that moment, it was hitting me differently. Uh-huh. And, and I, I've come to realize that was just my time. Yeah. And I just froze. I wasn't able to say anything in response to him. And I was just feeling like I had to believe what he was telling me. Mm-hmm. It was something in my spirit. I mean, I walked into that gym that day with no intention whatsoever to walk out of there as a Christian. Mm-hmm. But I did. You know, he explained it to me. And then I felt the presence of God. It, it, it overwhelmed me. I felt the fear of the Lord because, you know, I realized what my condition was. And I'm like, my goodness, I, I, I got to do this. I, I got to the because just something in me knew if I didn't receive him, then I, I was finished. I knew, but I knew I had to. So I held hands. We locked hands. He, we bowed our heads. I prayed and gave my life to Christ. And, um, I walked out of that gym never the same ever again. Oh. And I um, went and bought a Bible. I went to his church. And I was never just so into a book. like I could never put the Bible down. I was reading it every moment of every day. I was 
I was so obsessed with that book. I was taking it to, I was actually sleeping with it, bringing it to bed with me and everything. I, I just, I brought it to work with me. I just, every day I was just like a fanatic. I could not stop reading it. Uh-huh. And I just was, you know, praying. And I just like, and my spiritual walk just, you know, has kept changing and proceeding ever since. Uh-huh. And I will never be on that side of the fence ever again. And I know that he is the truth, the way and the life. I know that there's no other name under heaven given by which we're saved, as it says in 412 of the book of Acts. He is the way. Um, a lot of people out there that, that listen to your show may not get it. They may still be Satanists. They may still be Wiccans. They may still be into New Age or some sort of occultism or spiritualism. And, you know, nobody here is going to force you or demand for you to do anything. God gave you a free will as he did us. And every that that's that's just universal. Everybody has it. God will never violate that, nor will I. But I can I can assure you this. I know how it feels to be where you are. I'm speaking to you listeners, you know, that may not have come to the Lord. You know, I know that 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 insight, that knowledge that you think we have, it, it's it's like a, it's like a rod that cannot be broken. And it just the independence and the liberation and just, you know, the enlightenment, what they call enlightenment. I know it's overwhelming and you you think it's the greatest thing, you know, but it's also the greatest bondage that you'll ever be in. You know, I felt so free, but I was so bound. You know, you think that you you have all the revelation of all the different mysteries of life and, you know, you're, you're, you're independent and you're powerful and, and you're free from, you know, the tentacles of the world. OK, but really, you're actually in the grip of its power and its malevolence has a, has a grip on you and you don't even realize it. Even when you feel you're at your happiest moment, you're in a cage, a spiritual cage. OK, and that's what a lot of people are like. They're sitting in a, in a cell. But really. Yeah. Christ unlocked that cell 2,000 years ago. But you know what? People still remain in there because they have no idea if the gate is open and there's something better outside of that gate. Satan, sometimes he'll make yourself feel real comfortable. You know, he'll give you everything you your heart desires. And you can say, this is home to me. This is what I want. But you have no idea what Christ can give you outside of that cell. All you have to do is pick yourself up, walk over, and walk out and you'll you'll come to witness it and realize it for yourself i don't have to you nor i have to force or preach that upon anybody if they anybody just just sincerely reaches to him he will respond you know people just don't realize that he will respond i think as well um you know whatever people might be listening who say well i'm not into any of what you've discussed I've even, you know, I've evolved beyond that. I've evolved, evolved beyond the religions of the world, whether it's Christianity, whether it's Satanism. I'm now in touch with light beings from other planets. I'm in touch with all these spirit, spiritual beings, and they're really, you know, they're really the good guys. Uh, I'm far more evolved than you. But I would say, well, really question that, because although that might seem logical, um, I believe it is a false light. And of course. Again, as I would say to a Satanist or a New Ager or anyone from any religion or any type of spiritual practice, please test it in the name of Jesus Christ. If you are talking to any kind of spiritual being, test it in the name of Jesus Christ, like the Bible says, and challenge it to show you its true identity. Um, because all of these things are, are just a diversion to keep us away from Jesus Christ. Um, and, and, yeah. and, you know, and I'm going to say this too, like the power of God is so immense mm-hmm. and undeniable. I mean, even somebody, even though he was, you know, wicked and confused, but even people like Simon the Sorcerer in the Bible, mm-hmm. he wanted the Holy Spirit so much he wanted to pay money for it. Mm-hmm. You know the story. He was, he approached the apostles and he wanted to buy it. And 
he realized not that it, it, it's a free gift if only he would just, you know, willingly receive it, yeah. you know. And it's something that suppresses far more. And this was, and Simon was a man that people were, were saying he was a true man of God. Like, they thought he had, like, the power of God mm-hmm. in him. But even he wanted that power. But notice, though, like Stephen the Martyr says, though, but you stiff-necked and uncircumcised. You always resist the Holy Spirit. People don't want to believe, you know. And then some people are infatuated with it, but they don't want to surrender to it, yeah. you know. They have a perception or a concept of it, but they don't want to surrender and see it and understand it and, you know, for what it really is. Mm-hmm. It's like Pontius Pilate. I mean, Pontius Pilate was facing Jesus Christ, okay? And when Jesus says, you know, I have come, you know, to, you know, be, you know to give the truth, you know. And, and Pontius Pilate was looking right at Christ and said, what is truth? Mm-hmm. Didn't even understand that he was looking right at it. And a lot of people are like that. Yeah. How many Pontius Pilots? Are, it doesn't matter. I mean, whether you're a satanic Pontius Pilate or a Wiccan one or a New Age one or a Hindu or, you know, how many out there, don't, they can look at Christ though, and they're still saying to themselves, what is truth? Where is the truth? How can I attain the truth? Yeah, and, and, people and are you'll still find searching. it in him. People are right. still searching, and, and there's a lot of people out there who have uncovered a lot of truth people I, ad- I admire because they're, you could say, whistleblowers, you know, journalists and alternative media who are aware of propaganda and they, unco- they uncover a lot of, of hidden things and corruption and all of that. And it's like they've got 90% of the truth almost, but they've not got all of the truth because they've just not found Jesus yet. Um, and it's that whole matter of, you know, truth being absolute. It's either if you've even if you've got 90% of the truth, well, you've you've still got lies in there. You still don't have the whole truth because truth is absolute. And Jesus, it is. Is, Jesus is truth. Um, absolutely. And, and there is such a thing as false light and there is such a thing as the true light. And Jesus Christ is the true light. As he so is many, the true light. So many of and, us have, have found. And see, and what breaks my heart too is like, you know, you see people that are, you know, they're living their lives for, you know, new age spiritualism or they're living their lives for Satanism or they're living their lives for different types of paganism and witchcraft. And there's just so much into like the whole occult world. OK, or even people that don't believe in any of it. And they're just straight up atheist, you know, yeah, yeah. but, you know, and, and I believe me, Laura, I understand more than they know why they oppose religion because i'll tell you something i oppose it more than them yeah i'm sure of it because you know what the bible and you know the the words of god himself says in fact it says right in first corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 that love never well no it's first corinthians chapter 13 verse 8 it says that love never fails and it never does but yet you see love fail time and time again because of religion why because you know, you know, they want to make the condemned feel more condemned. They want to make the hated feel more hated. They want to feel, make the persecuted or the hurting feel more persecuted and more hurt. Yeah, and Jesus is never like right. that. He, he loved the outcast. Yeah. He loved the marginalized. He and, treated them with love and respect. Yeah, and I'm going to say this to every single, you know, Satanist or witch or spiritualist that, that would listen to your show. And I'm saying this directly to everyone, whether they're from where you are in Scotland or the United Kingdom, or whether they're from Australia or Asia or the Middle East or Russia, the United States, Canada, the Pacific Islands, no matter where you are. You know what? Because of God's love, I'm not going to tell you, okay, how wrong you are for what you're doing or condemn you for it. But I'll tell you what, if I was able... I would take the most brutal beating that my body could endure just so you could for five minutes understand what the real truth is. And I would do that for you because I love you as a human being. That's, that's what God's love is to me. Not to hold you accountable because of some religious tradition. Oh, satanic, you know, heathen of witchcraft, get down away. I wouldn't say that to you. Do I condone what you do? No. 
If you ask me, will it destroy you in the long run? Yes, it will. You're in a trap. You have no idea. But that doesn't mean, though, that I'm going to I'm gonna sit and judge you worse. I'll judge what you do, but I won't judge you. Because yeah. judging what you do, I'm judging what I myself did. I was exactly. into the same thing, exactly. you know. Exactly. Has nothing to do with that. No, Has nothing to do with me not loving people. You know, even Jesus says to, you know, love your enemies or love your neighbor. You know, we're supposed to love. You know, yeah, definitely, and, Jerry, and I, I'm the same. You know, when I when I share my story, I'm in no way trying to come across arrogant or patronising or saying to people, "I'm right and you're wrong." It's not about that. It's genuinely because we we've lived through these things ourselves. We we we've found the answer, and we genuinely would do anything to to see others come to Jesus too. Um, right. You know, as you say, some days you just feel I could just just die for this cause, if you like, just to see all of these people come to Jesus and and receive his his love, and it's in no way done in a a judgmental way. So I totally totally um, agree with you there, Jerry. Right. And you know, we're called to be salt and light, and we're called to let our light shine, and we're called to love people like Jesus. We're certainly not called to to judge no. people not no. at all. No. So yeah. I'm I mean the Bible that. says you could be angry but sin not. Yeah, I'm angry with sin, but I'm not gonna allow that anger though to bring me to sin myself. Mm-hmm. You know? That's the difference, you know, and that's you know, and sometimes when you show like, you know, when you show feelings like that, you could even show them in love. Mm-hmm. You could be angry in a loving way one of the biggest examples of that is when christ destroyed the temple Mm -hmm. he did that because of his love for the father Mm -hmm. so that's why he didn't go into that temple because he had an agenda to hurt the people Mm -hmm. he just he was repulsed by what was going on yeah and it's like we're not we're not angry at people anyway we're angry at the devil and we're we're angry at the demons that are exactly the demons that are deceiving people making people think they're talking to the dead relatives they're talking to goddesses they're talking to light beings it's the demons (laughs) that we're we're angry at not the people Um, so Jerry I'd like you to we've just got another 10 minutes so um really just in, encourage the listeners it's obviously almost Halloween we don't have too much time to go into all that but encourage the listeners um, you know to focus on Jesus he, his light overcomes any darkness um, so not to focus on dark things but but really just from your opinion um, about Halloween because for example my uh, opinion when I was a spiritualist, we were certainly taught, uh, all the famous mediums taught us Halloween was the best night of the year to contact so-called spirits of the dead, so-called spirit guides. Um, you know, they really felt that the atmosphere was thinner and that spirits would come through to us more easily then. But since I've become a Christian, I've realized, well, yeah, of course it's easier to contact spirits on Halloween simply because there's so many occult groups around right. the world. Not not just some Satanists, but there are so many old, occult groups who are doing very dark things on Halloween. You know, blood sacrifices, humans, animals, orgies, murder. Um, so yeah, the spiritual vibrations are going to be much more dark on Halloween. Therefore, anyone can tap into spirit powers more easily on that night. Um, of course. You know, that happens to be why I would explain it. Um, did you feel, as a Satanist, were you t- also taught that Halloween was that kind of season, that t- kind of calendar? Was well, I know a lot of Satanists, and I myself, yeah, I, I utilized and experienced that holiday in, in not a very good way. I confess I have never did blood sacrifice. I never took life. Uh-huh. But... You know, I I was I was very into working magic. I was very into you know. <laughs> I did a lot of just you know. First of all, I like to say too, Halloween is one of the most misunderstood days. Uh, whether you look at it from the perspective of a Christian or from the perspective of an occultist, mm-hmm. because you know, 
uh, as we know, you know, Halloween. Well, first of all, Halloween actually, believe it or not, by a lot of scholars. Okay, it's also known as All Halloween or All Hallows Eve. It's also um, by a lot of um, like from the traditional church. It's also seen as All Saints Eve. Okay, and you know, it is like a Christianized feast according to a lot of scholars with, you know, influenced by a lot of um, Celtic harvest festivals from, you know, in history. You know, there is obviously pagan roots there, particular, you know, with the Gaelic festival Samhain or Sowen, okay, which is where that comes from. We are running out of time, so if folks can please go to my blog and search for Jerry Blaze, you'll find an article he wrote all about that about two years ago. So, Jerry, if you want to just sum up in one or two sentences your thoughts on Halloween, and then it'll be time to pray for the listeners. Okay, well, it's, I'll sum it up like this. If it's not spoken of or, you know, encouraged in the Bible, then stay away from it. You know, because especially with the way it's the, in modern the modern day of today, it's obviously been, it's, it's had so many things added to it. It's, it's really just not a very good thing spiritually, emotionally, physically. Um, if you're a Christian, I mean, I don't see where there's anything wrong. You want to use the day to do something to honor the Lord is one thing, but if you have Halloween in mind and you're really not doing God's service, you're doing them no favors and you're really doing nothing that's beneficial to yourself. You know, there's a lot of bad things that are attached to it. And, you know, I would suggest, you know, not not to deal with it. And I'm somebody that formerly loved that day. Yeah. Yeah. You me, know. Yeah, me too. You know, when I was a spiritualist, a new ager, Halloween was like a real important day. We almost felt like it was a day where we could really introduce people to the old cult who normally wouldn't bother. But it was a day when temptations to do anything occultic was very high. On that day, it was a day where you could uh, evangelize, actually, and, and bring people into into the occult on that day. Um, and I think now as well, you do see a lot of that. Any Halloween parties, you know, there'll be Ouija boards, tarot cards. Oh, all, yeah. different, all different kinds of occult practices can happen uh, that night. So, yeah, I would, I would say the same. And really, um, just drawing to a close now, I'd like to emphasize to listeners... Really thank you for, for listening to these recent radio broadcasts about Satanism and Halloween and the power of, of Christ to bring people out of any darkness is so powerful. His love, his peace and his joy totally transforms lives and Jesus Christ is the true, true light of the world. And I just want to ask Jerry to pray for you now but I'm just going to remind you of his website which is jmblaze.wordpress.org his radio show it's all about God on reaching out radio blog talk radio and his book which will be out soon it's all about God and really Jerry I just love you now to pray for listeners as you feel led to Sure, and just, well, real quick, I just want to say it, it's actually jmblaze.wordpress.com. Okay, sorry. So, people, it's, it's actually a .com, not a .org. Okay. But that's fine. Okay, <laughs> thank you. But, um, yeah, I just, I just like to pray. Um, you know, Heavenly Father, uh, we come before you, and I like to pray for all of those who have listened to us today. I pray that your, that your words, you know, touch the mind, touch the heart, and touch the sight of so many people that are searching, but they, you know, they just can't find truly what they're searching for. And I pray, Father God, that, you know, let them not see you through the eyes of religion or through the eyes of the media or through the eyes of any type of a tradition, but through the very eyes of your word itself. Let that touch their heart. Let that come into their spirit like a, like a soothing medicine, Father God. Let them know your true love and your true will and your true purpose for them. And that through your son, Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, will they be directed to the destination that they have so been looking for all of their lives. And I pray this over each and every ear that has listened to this broadcast. In love and in glory and power of God himself, do I, do I hope and pray for you. 
and you know that like I say that you will find truly what your purpose is and that you are worth something far more than you ever could imagine but you have to you know see it through the eyes of Christ after all he did not die for nothing and as soon as you receive him for that you'll realize that he had you in mind as he hung on that cross and I pray this in the name of almighty God the father amen Amen. Thank you so much, Jerry. And I'd just like to pray as well sure. um, before we end. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this show. And Lord, I pray that, that Holy Spirit, you will help people to focus on Jesus Christ and his light this October. And Lord, I pray for, for those who are listening that the Holy Spirit really touches their heart with your, with your love, Lord, and that you have a plan. Um, to prosper them and to give them a good plan for their life, not to harm them, Lord Jesus, that they will open to your love and your destiny and your wonderful plan for their lives. For surely, Jerry and I have found that your plan is wonderful and that you are the most wonderful God anyone could ever encounter. We thank you, Jesus Christ, for your love and your light. And thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thanks so much, Jerry, and God bless you just now. Thank you, too. God bless you, and I, I had a great time. Thank you. Me, too. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. The views expressed in this production may not necessarily be those of Eternal Radio. Eternal Radio. <laughs>